Good afternoon, everyone. It is five o'clock Jerusalem time. We have just all gathered around the table for Shabbat together. This is the Shabbat Watch in the Global International Prayer Room for Global Watch. It is February 16th, 2024, and Carolyn Hyde will be leading our watch today. So, Father, we just thank you for Carolyn. We bless her. We bless her family. We thank you, Lord, for what you have put within her to deliver this day. And we just pray, Father, that great would be the joy of your people today. Lord, our, our joy comes from you, and our joy remains in you, and your strength remains in us. And we just thank you and praise you today, Lord, for clarity of thinking. I thank you, Father, for uh, open hearts. And that, Lord, as you speak, we would have ears to hear, hearts to embrace what you desire, Father, for us to embrace. And that, Lord, there would just be a deeper and deeper connection of love between the family that is sitting around this table today in the name of Yeshua. Over to you, Carolyn. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley and Bill. And Shabbat Shalom. L'Kulchem to everyone. Uh, good to see you all. Um, I am going to talk about the Knesset because I want to share something with you. Um, a lot of you get our prayer updates. And so, you, and, and of course, some of you, a lot of you were, I recognize you were on the call when we went to Shiloh and we prayer walked there and got to see the, the red heifers. Um, by the way, I found out the one I was petting and feeding, uh, her name is Yom Tov which means good day. <laughs> She's the friendliest of all of them. That's why uh, she came to me. My friend who keeps me informed on, on the Red Heifers told me that. Um, I just want to start off with, with a praise report. I, I want to thank you all for that you pray for our family. I'm just so, so blessed. And I know you pray for a lot of the families here in Israel. Um, I know you're praying for our son Ariel and his wife Shayla and our son Avi and his wife Leora. Our uh, religious daughter, uh, who lives in Svat, Shana, um, the other day when the missiles hit Svat and it uh, killed one soldier and wounded eight others, um, we were on the phone almost the whole time with, with Shana and Yishai and the kids uh, as they were in their bomb shelters. I was ready to get in the car and drive up there and do whatever uh, to help them, but they said, no, no, just stay because it was a big barrage. Um, I don't know if you've heard this, but this is just a, a prayer uh, request. What the information that that I'm getting from Svat from some people who live there, and including one who is in the U.S. military and Israeli, um, is that they're expecting one day uh, they don't know when a full barrage um, over Svat. Um, because the Pikuda Orif, the Northern Home Front Command, kind of like Homeland Security or something, um, they're stationed in a suburb of Sfat. And right near Sfat is a mountain called Meron, and all the satellite stations are up there. And the enemy knows this. I'm not saying anything new. And so that, that's what they're always aiming for. And that's why the barrages are trying to reach uh, there. And But that's where my daughter and son in love and seven of our grandchildren live. And so I just want to thank you, but I, I want to give a praise report because Shana is, she's pretty ferocious. Um, we were at their house yesterday. We brought them dinner and suddenly she got a phone call um, from I-24 News. It's a TV station. Uh, you've probably heard of it. They uh, have a news channel in English as well as Hebrew, and they do the English one sometimes live. So they wanted Shana to do a report because she's been going around in Sfat and, and she's been hearing that there are several uh, Ganya Ladims, like preschools, where the children are in such rundown uh, preschools. The conditions are so horrific that Homeland uh, Home Front Command said, when the sirens go off, take the children outside, lay on the ground with the hands over their head and their faces to the ground. Well, it's been raining. So and they don't have time to get their coats when the alarms go, because they've got like 25 seconds. So they run out there, they're in the mud, face down. 
and it's freezing. And, and so it's, it's pretty bad. So Shana did some reports on that and she was able to raise the money for four bomb shelters uh, to be put in front of preschools. And that's why I 24 news wanted her on, but she's not going to stop there. She's going to keep going until every preschool and every school has a bomb shelter in front of it. And I just really, I just want to say thank you for, for praying for her and Yishai. Um, we just love them. They're precious. They're Orthodox Jews. They know I'm a believer, uh, obviously. Uh, but you know what? When the safety of children are at risk, all that goes out the window. And we just want to do what we can do to bless our people. And we can talk later <laughs> about theology and all that. So I just wanted to thank you with that. So with that in mind, I want to revisit the um, prophetic artist journey and share something with you that I didn't share in our prayer updates because um, some people would probably not understand, uh, but I know that you guys would uh, because of who you are. And I, I know a lot of you personally and, and, and I'm just so blessed uh, to get to walk with you through this life. And so back to the vision of the PAJ, it's it's about the Kharishim, the four craftsmen or the artisans that God is raising up. Um, and he's raising up an army of artists. He really is. Uh, people who, I'm not just talking about painters or musician, musicians or dancers, people who think outside the box and people who are creative in the, at their core. They understand, um, yeah, the source of creativity. So the Kharashim are the craftsmen, the artisans. And by the way, Betzalel and Aholiav, the first of the Kharashim, you know who's the first person in the Bible to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Was Betzalel. I mean, when you think about it, that's really an honor that God would choose the first person to fill with his Holy Spirit would be an artist. And, and so, um, yeah, there's something to this. So while we were on the PAJ with the team, um, I had scheduled a tour of the, they call it the treasures of the Knesset. It's not a governmental tour of the Knesset. That's the main one that people go to. Um, but this is one that they rarely do. And the woman who led the tour she was magnificent. She's from Lithuania, uh, made Aliyah in 1972 when she was young. She, she just was fantastic. And her knowledge was quite extensive. So um, Fanya is her name. So she took us into the uh, main hall where all the dignitaries meet and so forth. And there's a grand piano in there. And on the wall is a trilogy of a tapestry based on three of Marc Chagall's paintings that are, if you've ever been in there, I highly recommend just taking the time to sit before that trilogy of paintings. It is beyond magnificent. As an artist, I, I just, we were all blown away and we were all noticing things in it. And Fanya, our guide was just delighted that, you know, she could take a, a group of real artists around this place. And so, as we sat there, though, I was staring at the tapestry, and suddenly the Lord began to speak to me. And he showed me, in the Knesset, there is a small, dark room underneath the Knesset. You're only allowed to go there by invitation, so hardly anybody knows about this place. And what I saw there was... This is where plans are made for evil and not for good in the Knesset. And I didn't quite understand it. And I was looking at the people to see if they were getting anything and nobody was. And so sometimes have you ever had this happen where you get a word and nobody else seems to have it and you think, well, maybe I should just be quiet. <laughs> people will think I'm strange. I don't know. I, I don't really care about that, but you know, um, I, I just didn't say anything. Um, but what I did start to do was make a proclamation. So when Moses was standing before the burning bush, God said five things to him. 
you see it in the scripture. It's not direct, but um, you, you can see it. And this is something that brain scientists have picked up on. And so basically what the Lord said to Moses, I see you. I hear you. I know how big this is for you. I am coming and I'm going to do something about this situation. And this is what the Lord is saying. And I think it's Exodus 3, 6. I, I, I could look it up and I'll find it. So I just began to say that and speak that out over whoever was meeting down in that room, that not only I see you, but the spirit of God sees you and we hear you and we know this is a big deal for you, but we're coming and we're going to do something about this because it's not good what's happening. So I just left it at that. And then we went into the plenary hall. Now, the plenary hall is the place you've seen it in pictures. It's in the news all the time. It's where all the MKs, the members of the Knesset, sit down in their seats and they make laws and they argue and they um, fight and they try to pass laws that will be for the benefit of Israel. And they do a lot of good. OK, there's a lot, you know, a lot of good stuff, but they're politicians. OK, so suddenly our guide began to explain to us about the cornerstone of the Knesset. The cornerstone of the Knesset was placed in a small dark room underneath the plenary hall. She's never been there because it's only by invitation only. And everything she was saying was what I had just seen in the other hall. And so I was listening very carefully and I knew exactly what she was talking about, obviously. And it's right underneath. So when, you, when you've seen in the pictures in the plenary hall, when the MKs are, are speaking, when whoever is speaking, because they try to take turns and not all talk at once, <laughs> they don't always, always succeed, but um, the main speaker sits in that place. Right under there is where the cornerstone is and where that small dark room is underneath. Um, I began saying that again. I see you. I hear you. I know this is big, but I'm coming and I'm going to do something about it. And at the end of our time in there, uh, Fania began to walk out and I held the group up, the, the prophetic artists, and I told them what I heard in the other room, what I heard, and then how Fania confirmed it with what, uh, just giving the facts about what's in there. So with that in mind, I want to, um, I really sensed a terror on the enemies of Israel. And remember, the prophetic artists, which all of you are, okay, you're all prophetic, you all understand the creativity of the creator, whatever field you're in. And we are called to terrorize and scatter and destroy the enemies of Judah, Jerusalem, and Israel. Just like it says in Zechariah 1, uh, 21 to 22, or 21, yeah. So with that in mind, I want to share one more thing because I want to use this time to pray into that dark place. Um, yeah, there was another highlight of the tour. We were taken down into a bomb shelter. Uh, how many of you have been on a tour of the Knesset? Any? No? Okay. So, um, we went down into this bomb shelter and we were told that down in um, this bomb shelter, when the Six Day War first began, June 5th, uh, the security officers herded all the members of the Knesset down into this bomb shelter because they, the, the missiles and the bombs were getting closer and closer and they were in danger. And so they were in that shelter and in that shelter, they made a decision and they decided, look, because I don't know if you know this, but this, you know, you've heard of the West Bank and you've probably heard me always unmute and correct you when you say that, <laughs> because it's not the West Bank, it's the Eastern part of Israel. And so just a little history lesson on the side, when Jordan attacked us and they got Judea and Samaria what the world calls the West Bank, but it's Israeli land. It's the biblical heartland. And so they got it. 
Then they attacked us again. That was the Sixth Day War. At, uh, sorry, the the June Sixth War, Fifth War, and they attacked us even more. And they wanted to take Jerusalem um, and take more. And this is when that decision was made. Look, if they're just going to keep attacking us and taking more and more land, we're making the decision. And that was made in that bomb shelter by the members of the Knesset. We are going to launch an attack on them. And we are going to take the Temple Mount, no matter what the cost. And that decision became a weapon. And that's what the Lord spoke to me in that bomb shelter. A decision is a weapon. So keeping that in mind, um, then we discussed a scripture that I had gotten right before coming in there, and I wasn't sure of the meaning of it, but don't you just love how the Lord gives little puzzle pieces, and then he puts the puzzles together for you, or he adds from other people? I love it when he does that. So we had been discussing 1 Samuel 13. 19 through 21. And it basically says that there was no, actually, somebody want to go ahead and read that? 1 Samuel 13, 19 to 21. Now, there was no blacksmith to be found, to be found throughout the land of Israel. For the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make swords or spears. But all the Israelites would go down to the Philistines to sharpen each man's plowshare, his mattock, his axe, and his sickle. And the charge for sharpening was the pim for the plowshares, the mattocks, the forks, and the axes, and to set the points of the goats. Amen. So what we see was there was no blacksmith. Well, the word for blacksmith, it's harash, the harashim from Zechariah. Uh, these are the artisans. Um, and that's another term for them. It's kind of a broad term. So there were, there were no craftsmen, no blacksmiths. None of the Israelites could get their tools sharpened or their weapons either, because obviously the Philistines didn't uh, want them to use them against them. Makes sense. But this is the bottom line. When war came, the Israelites had no weapons. Yeah, keep that in mind. Kind of like today, uh, we're not equipped enough. We've got some good weapons. We've got, you know, if you look at the list, but yeah, Iran has 83.7 uranium enrichment. When they get to 90%, they can launch a nuclear warhead. So we don't have a weapon against that. Keep that in mind. So there were no Kharashim in Israel during those days. Well, this is what I want to pray into. Isaiah 54, 16 to 17. It's again this term, Kharashim or Kharash. Behold, I myself have created the smith, the harashim, the harash, who blows on the fire of coals and produces a weapon for its work. I have created the destroyer to inflict ruin. No weapon formed against you will prosper. We say this one a lot. And you will condemn every tongue that accuses you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication is from me, declares the Lord. So with this in mind, I want to take time to listen to the Lord with you and pray into this because what I see from my little house here in the Galilee is we're not ready for what's coming. We are not equipped. We don't have the kind of weapons we need. For one thing, we are a nation mostly without God. And those who do have some form of relationship with God, it's mainly like religious gestures um, and, and not a, a living relationship with the Holy One of Israel. And we are vastly under-equipped for what's coming. 
especially if Hezbollah is going to launch missile barrages um, at the north, uh, which is what they're looking at. Um, yeah, so keep those scriptures in mind and keep in mind that dark place under the Knesset and what we would say to that. Because when you made a decision for Messiah, that became the best weapon you had. There's no better weapon than that. And that's what I'm talking about, that we as a nation are ill-equipped because we have not made that decision for Messiah. And so we're just doing things in the physical and making plans and getting out whiteboard and chalkboard and drawing pictures and strategy and all that stuff. Yeah. So... With that in mind, let's take time, wait on the Lord, and then please feel free to unmute as the Lord gives you a word. I'm just considering from Ezekiel 38. I'll read a couple of verses. Uh, Thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind. This is addressed to Gog and Magog, which we believe are Islamic nations, and you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go against the land of unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls. And then uh, I won't read the whole thing, uh, but it says, in uh, verse 16, you will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days that I, will, that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am hallowed in you, O God, before their eyes. Uh, Lord, ultimately, everything is for your glory. Uh, the final events of this age, which we're fast approaching. Uh, Lord, we don't know the exact time. And we do pray uh, for your shield, your iron dome. And again, our safety is in you. Uh, so you are preparing uh, this nation. Uh, Lord, you've defended us in our unbelief. And we give you praise and thanksgiving. But Lord, your ultimate aim is to defend the people that call upon your name. So uh, whatever it takes, uh, bring us as a people to call upon your name as our shield and our protection. In Yeshua's name. Lord God of Israel, we praise you, we magnify you, Lord. You're the one that shines light into dark places. Even in Genesis, you said, let there be light. And so, Father, we ask that you will expose the evil in that dark room, Lord. That is where so many decisions are being made. And today we want your light to shine through, oh God. Shatter the darkness, oh God, so that your light will shine through and bring the decisions that you want Israel to make, Father. And Lord, you are the one that is revealing deception to. And Father, we ask that their ears, the spiritual ears and eyes would be opened, Lord, to see the deception around them. Because deception is so subtle, Father. It is just like the serpent that slithers, Lord. So Father, we pray that you will protect Whoever is making the decision, be with Netanyahu, Lord, and with all the cabinet members. And this is a crucial time. And let them see that light. Just one little spark of your light, Lord, will enlighten them. And we commit them into your hands. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Molly, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'm going to decree from... 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God 
to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when Israel obedience when we as the one new man our obedience is complete in Christ Jesus so Lord tonight we at this hour as we come to celebrate your peace your joy your word your name your glory your wisdom your revelation your understanding we thank you for giving us that understanding through Carolyn and the 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 artists who went there and Lord we thank you at the, at the Knesset is a cornerstone and we are calling for that cornerstone for, as Jesus, the cornerstone in the Knesset. Lord, for our weapons are not carnal and we are calling forth every high thing that has been exalted in the Knesset, has been spoken in the dark. We call that, we pull that down, that high imagination that comes against Israel, that comes against the disobedience towards Christ. We, we pull it down to the obedience of Christ through our word. Lord, this era is about the mouth and it is about the door and about how we speak at this door. And Lord, so Lord, we speak to this door, we speak to it and we declare what you have already spoken, that no weapon formed against Israel will prosper. And every tongue, Lord, is interesting that it is about the tongue and the words that are spoken. And so, Father, every hidden agendas in the in the um, whether it is the Knesset, whether it is the drawing boards of the nations that surround the the Hezbollah, the Iranians, and Father, the nations that are scheming and plotting against Israel. Father, we thank you that these thoughts, these plots. These scheming plots will not prosper against, against Israel, against, Lord, the plans and the purposes and the promises of covenant promises that you have spoken to your people. And today we speak that in agreement and we declare that, Lord, as you, Lord Jesus, you said that the gates of Hades shall not prevail over your ecclesia. And so, Lord, through this day, through the, the debrief and through this time, every scripture that has come in the defense, in the, in the promise, we, the ecclesia of our Lord, seated in heavenly places with you, far above every principality and power of darkness. And as we speak forth, Lord, we thank you that you watch over your word to perform it. You are, Lord, we ask you to hearken your angels to go forth. And as in Psalm 118, we declare over Israel and over the Knesset, Father God, the gates of righteousness be open and that Jesus, the cornerstone, will be established as, as Carolyn said, Messiah, the knowledge of Messiah is the greatest weapon for Israel. And so tonight in agreement with thanksgiving, with praise, we come in agreement and declare that Yeshua is Lord over Israel and the Knesset, and you are the chief cornerstone, building your ecclesia, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. Amen. Shoshana? Yes, Amen, uh, Molly. And um, I thank you, Lord, that you are the cornerstone. And I think it's about this. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. And further on, you said, um, Right. It's in Colossians 2, when he had disarmed the room, right? uh, having cancelled out this certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, 
which was hostile to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. Thank you, Lord, that you already triumphed over this, that you are the cornerstone, and we we declare this, that you are the one, your church, you, everything is built on. You are the Alpha and the Omega. And I thank you that every curse and everything which is in dark places, your light is um, overcoming this darkness. And all the curses are already under your feet at your cross and under your footstool. And they have no power no power we declare no power over this because your blood is shed your blood is shed even over this part of the knesset and we we cover it lord in jesus name that there is no um curse coming out of this place and we declare that israel is getting to know yeshua as their savior yeah. and I thank you that you say they will see and they have open eyes and they will weep for, for him when they see, it, see him on the cross. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your salvation. I declare this salvation over Israel. And I thank you for this covenant you made with your land, with your people, with your bride. And as on the cornerstone, this was also coming to my mind, when you have a wedding, especially in Israel, you crash a glass of wine and the, the bride says yes. And um, I don't know whether this is a habit in Israel, but we have the habit when we set a cornerstone, we crash a glass with wine on this cornerstone. So um, I declare that this is this bridal um, yes to you as a cornerstone, Yeshua. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Let me just add something to that before Margaret shares. Uh, the word cornerstone in Hebrew is Rosh Pina. Um, Rosh Pina is a, a, the town right next to Tzfat. Um, and it is the site of the only modern day revival in Israel. Um, you know, you've heard of Benjamin and Reuven Berger. And of course, Sarah Lieberman, she was just a, a child then. Her parents were in that revival, the Berger brothers, several others. Um, and they had out and outright revival. They had people coming to the Lord all over the place. It was just nonstop. And then I forgot what happened, but something happened that shut it down. But everybody in Israel who's Meshachit, the, the believers, we all know that uh, it's it's not a coincidence that the only revival in modern day history in Israel uh, happened in Rosh Pina, the cornerstone. Go ahead, Margaret. Interesting, very interesting. Um, I have scripture, Luke 8, 17. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed than not be known or brought out into the open. And I believe, Carolyn, the fact that the Lord told you and that the lady, surprisingly enough, said this thing, that's already an opening, a con you know, saying things are, are not being concealed. So I believe there is, a, how would you say the word stepping into, you know, like, you know, there is a, a procedure, how things are unfolding. So I believe is God is in the process of unfolding the truth about that place in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for your word. And this is true, that there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed, including this place what it is being used for and then we will know exactly how to pray for it and father we thank you lord god for that uh, um that lady the favor we had with that lady lord and uh, we ask you to bless her in jesus name and thank you so much carolyn 
Bless you. Thank you. Amen. And I just want to say thank you, Margaret. Margaret was with us on the journey. Um, and you played such an essential role. You were like the guardian. <laughs> Seriously. It was It was a real privilege um, to journey with you. One other thing, um, I want to make sure there's time. Um, the Lord told me to have two more PAJs um, very, very clearly. Uh, one in May uh, during um, uh, pe the Pesach Shani, the second Passover. You know, when uh, the Israelites came and said, hey, what about us? We didn't get to celebrate Passover because this is in the Torah, because we were impure at the time or maybe touching a dead body or whatever, and they couldn't take of the Passover. So they made a rule that uh, a month later, about the same time, there would be a Pesach Shani, a second Passover. And that's when he wants this uh, next PAJ to be. It also runs through Lag Bomer, which is a couple days later. Uh, that's during the counting of the Omer, uh, which takes place. And Lag Bomer, sadly, is a time when um, Orthodox Jews from all over Israel gather on Mount Meron, which is that high mountain that Hezbollah is trying to target. It's where a lot of the satellites are for the military. Um, but they go up to Mount Meron and they pray to the spirits of dead rabbis. God have mercy. Um, yeah. So it it's um, so the the next PAJ is going through those two times, and then the PAJ after that will go through Shavuot, and that's in the month of June. So if anybody is hearing about coming to Israel and joining us, like I said, you don't have to be a musician or a painter. You just have to have a reverence for the Creator and think outside the box. Because this is this is not a regular tour with a tour box, a, a tour box, a tour bus, <laughs> and a program. Half the time, we don't know what we're doing until we wake up that morning and we wait on the Lord. And then he says, like, we had no plans to go to Shiloh. That was just while we were driving from uh, the Dead Sea to Jerusalem. And you're right, they did have a stampede there, Shanta. And this is, again, things in the kingdom of God, there are no coincidences. The groups of yeshiva students gather on Mount Meron to, to you know, they're following their rabbis up there to pray to the dead rabbis, the spirits of them. And so the one group, there were 43 of them, yeshiva students, who uh, were in that tamp uh, stampede and the bleachers collapsed. And 43 of them were killed, which is a real tragedy. And it's not a coincidence that they were from a yeshiva called Toldot Yaakov, which means the generation of Jacob. Um, yeah, God was sending a very strong message. Don't do that. And um, so I just wanted to, sorry, I didn't mean to make it like a commercial, but it, it, seriously, if any of you feel on your hearts to come, um, call me or I'll, I'll put my email in. Go ahead, Sandra. Yes. Yes, shalom, shalom. Um, by the way, I was also thinking of new wine in Hebrew. Um, just just briefly, does that, is that also that word new wine? Does that also ends with rosh? That means head, Carolyn? Is that no. correct? Tirosh or something? No, it would be yain chadash, uh, new wine. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Hadash, no. Yeah. Um, I was thinking of the Lord drew me to Daniel 2, verse 47, uh, that even uh, Nebuchadnezzar declared the Lord of uh, the God of Daniel, our, our Lord, as the revealer of secrets. And Jeremiah 32, if I'm correct, that Jeremiah says, Is there anything too hard? Uh, for our God, and then the Lord himself responds even, uh, is there anything too hard for me? So, Father, as we are bringing this matter before you, as Carolyn Hyde shared, and I want to thank you that she is in our 
our midst and what you have already revealed, Father, as you are the glorious, blessed revealer of secrets. There's no one else who, like you, Lord, who the only one who reveals secrets. And let these false, like uh, as Shoshana said, the cornerstone, let the, the cornerstone of falsehood that is actually speaking evil, that are that could draw your people to uh, evil agreements. Let these cornerstones of falsehood being removed of evil and all and the mouth of it will be shut that you as the cornerstone will be seated and that the Knesset will know it. And these like underground, as I was thinking of that word underground, as you were sharing, Carolyn, mm -hmm. uh, that these waters, Father, let it be so, oh, El Shaddai, that these waters will be swallowed up and that you true waters that will speak, that only speaks that pure wisdom as the Knesset is, should, should be, uh, from where also should should be spoken wisdom that 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 is that brings restoration that is concerning the people and the land father according to your your great promises father the ancient borders and that that will have its way that these waters will be ushered in no matter what happens be seated lord that the wisdom of revelation and the of revelation will be intertwined and that the nations and the neighbors and all those these countries and uh, north south east west that they will know that wisdom is speaking and that carolyn hyde will go out blessed as you are the keeper of our going out and our coming in and that the words will be placed in her mouth that will speak in the face of evil, that this will be the time, but also for those who should speak these words so that it really points to that you are, you alone, B'Shem Yeshua, that you are the cornerstone and that the nations will know this is their God. As Nebuchadnezzar said in all these decrees, when he came to that confession, the decree went out through that whole dominion and that the whole dominion of evil will crumble down, Father, and that it will be known, B'Shem Yeshua, that it is your dominion that is forever and that it is your kingdom from generation to generation. Let these for the who are who have this time as the only will that it will be humble and will be and that that it will be actually going even with increase of joy that is their strength the shem yeshua and i thank you father amen amen thank you sandra bless you Ruth? Yes, Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for your victory, that you have fought the victory for all the world, for all of us, for all generations. And you um, you, you uh, came down to the utmost depths of the earth and you nothing is hidden from you and you rose up again. Uh, in your resurrection power. And so we bring you all these dark places, especially in Israel, Jerusalem, in your beloved city, and you all know them, and you, ha you are, have the victory over them, and we um, declare the victory over them. Thank you that you revealed to Caroline already what uh, is going on, what the enemies enemies um, uh, plans um, will where, where they are conceived and so on but um, I want to um, declare the Psalm 27 over Israel so that you may talk to your people Israel that they can say the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. 
Through an army should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Through war should rise against me, in this I will be confident. And one thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me, and he shall set me high upon a rock. Yes, Lord, you do not forsake your people, and please be a shelter and shelter them under your wings, so that no uh, plans and no weapon uh, conceived against Israel may prosper. You have said it in your word, and we will remember this as a watchman. Thank you that you hear our prayers. Amen. Shem Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ruth. By the way, you know about Psalm 27. Some of you probably heard this, but uh, one of the chatufim, uh, um, the hostages, um, a young woman, a beautiful young woman, Mia, she had been praying Psalm 27 a lot. And when October 7th came and she was kidnapped and taken into, into Gaza, um, you know, sadly, a lot of the hostages who have been released have given testimony, the, the young women, that they were raped repeatedly, they were brutalized, was, ugh, disgusting. And, but Mia, they never touched her. And she continually recited Psalm 97. And one of the terrorists even said he didn't want to touch her. There was some kind of light over her. And, and it was disgusting to him. Um, that's the word of God. I don't think she still understands the fullness of what God did for her, but I just pray that she will. And, and that uh, that testimony that was just a little hidden nugget in her words when, when she was released from captivity, that that will continue to resonate throughout Israel, that we need to pray the word of God. Yeah. Go ahead, Mary. Lord, it is written in your in Numbers 14, 9, that protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Lord, I ask any demonic protection whatsoever of any sort or demonic provision or demonic sustenance to Israel's enemy be removed, Lord. But we do pray, Lord, that they all come to Christ. Father, I ask that Israel, that the, the, the blindness will be removed off of Israel and they would return with all their heart to you, Father, in Jesus' name. And Father God, in Jesus' name, I forbid the false prophet of fear, lack, evil speaking and thinking, and hatred to speak. I declare your tongue is stuck to the roof of your mouth and you will not speak in Jesus' name. I declare God's voice free reign in Judah, Jerusalem, Israel, and throughout the whole of the Middle East in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Iran, your nuclear weapons, I declare inoperable. I declare, Iran, you are not fit to function nuclear weapons. Desist your plans that they are not, they are null and void in Jesus' name. I declare the cornerstone hidden away in, in, in dark place come out into the light in Jesus' name to show forth truth, light, life, and wisdom. Father, we just gather all this to you. We lift it up to you. And I declare, Lord, and I ask that you will make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. I ask you, Father, to fill Israel with your light, your love, your truth, your wisdom, and the fullness of Christ. 
the fullness of the Holy Spirit and that each will walk on the path, the highway of holiness along that straight and narrow path that leads to life. Father, I ask in Jesus' name, and I speak the name Jesus over every heart and mind, and I declare those mindsets broken open by the power of God and the power of God's love to let in the light, the light of the, of the gospel of Christ in Jesus' name, Father. They are your people. They are the work of your hands. I declare, Israel, you belong to God and to no other. Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed you. You are blood-bought. You are blood-covered. You are lover-covered. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Lena, go ahead. And after you, I'm going to play a very quick song. Um, to give people time to get the wine and, and bread and matzah. Go ahead, Lena. I heard these verses from Matthew 2, verse 18. Um, I'm going to start with 17. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Rama weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Yeah. After Hero died an angel of the lord appeared in a dream to joseph in egypt and said get up take the child and his mother and go to the land of israel for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead so he got up took the child and his mother and went for the land of israel so first i want to say not all the children um rachel was weeping because all her children were no more but uh, we declare that they are not all no more. Actually, we declare um, over Israel that it is time for the revelation of the Messiah. It's time for your revealing Jesus again. It's time for um, hearts to, uh, for eyes to be opened and ears to be opened to see you. Father, we uh, bless the revelation of the Messiah uh, in Israel. Father, call the people into the knowledge of their Savior, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I'll give you a moment to get uh, wine and matzah, and I want to play this. Uh, it's only a minute and a half song. It's called Revealed, uh, because that's what we're praying, um, is that the glory of the Lord would be revealed. Um, so can I do a screenshot? Yeah, I can. Okay. Um, hold on. Can I just say something? Sure. Yeah. Father God, I just declare the blind will see, the blind see, the dumb speak, the deaf hear, the lame walk. Those who have erred in spirit will, will learn doctrine. Those who have murmured will be given understanding in Jesus' name. Oh, man. Good. Ready to enter into communion? I just want to say something funny about that song. You know uh, Renee and uh, Gideon from Que Lata Carmel, Carmel Assembly? A lot of you met them when you were there. So Renee came up to me. She has this ministry called Ema's Goodies, and she's always making cookies and, and treats for the soldiers. Wonderful ministry, actually. We, we support them, too. Um, she came up and she said, I heard a song. They had a little, uh, you know, a speaker on a table where they were having a barbecue at a, at a military base, an IDF base. And she said, I heard this song that sounded familiar. And I realized it was that song. They were, they were playing it. It must have been on a YouTube playlist of something, of something of somebody's. But we just pray for more and more messianic songs to flood uh, the airwaves of not just my song, but all the other believers, and there are a lot of them here in Israel who are fantastic musicians, highly anointed. And Lord, just let the music flow and and because music is a language and it, it touches the heart like nothing else can. So so we're ready. We have our wine and bread and everything. I need to read these direct messages here. I'll 
I'll do it afterwards. I'll, I'll copy it before we go. Okay. I want to just say the blessings over the wine and the bread as we take communion. And we just thank you, Lord, that you are the creator of the fruit of the vine. Thank you that your blood flows through our veins and that your blood covers us with such love that you even laid down your life for us. We are so grateful. We are eternally grateful for what you have done for us. And we do this in remembrance of you. As we sing, Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Baurei Pri HaGefen, Amen. And we take the matzah. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Father, that you are the bread of life. You are our sustenance, our provision. Even as we read in Revelations that there is a famine coming, we know that you can take the smallest amount of bread and multiply it. And you can take even two fish and turn them into a fantastic meal for, for fam whole families. Lord, you are our wonder working God and we praise you, we bless you. And we do this in remembrance of you as we sing. Baruch atarunai, Eloheinu melech haolam, amotzi lechem in haaretz, amen. Amen, amen. So, as we have reached the end of uh, this time, if everybody wants to unmute, and um, okay, I know it's out of sync, um, but Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Thank you.